I'm Karen Allgaier. I'm a certified Iyengar yoga teacher. And I teach at Green Tara Yoga in uh, Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Today I'm going to take you through a standing pose sequence that should take about 20 to 25 minutes to do. You can uh, get a print version of the sequence on my website, greentaryoga.com. So for this practice, you'll need a mat, a couple blocks, a blanket or two, and a strap. And if you don't have some of those items, I will be letting you know how you can do the practice without them. So to begin, join your feet and stand in Tadasana. Be on your heels and press your thighs back. As you press your thighs back, make the legs firm and lift up through the sides of the trunk. Lift the waist, lift the side chest, and broaden the top of the chest. Fully stretch the arms. Now take a quiet breath. Let the breath spread into the side body. Let the mind become quiet and composed as you begin your practice of yoga. Tadasana. Now, Uttita Trikonasana. Bend your arms and jump or walk your feet four to five feet apart. And press down through the heels. Lift up through the chest. And now turn the left foot slightly in and turn the right leg completely out. Rotate the thigh. Turn it from the inside out and lift up through the trunk. Now on an exhalation, move to the side and place your hand on your shin or you can place it on a tall block. Now, if the block is too low, you can put that palm on a chair seat if needed. Now, press strongly down into the left foot. Press strongly down into the left foot and elongate your trunk to the right. Roll your right shoulder back. As you fully stretch the arms and legs, turn the front of the body up to the ceiling. And now, take a quiet breath or two here. Fully stretch the arms and legs, lengthen the trunk, and have a quiet state of mind. To come up, press your left foot, pull from your left wrist, inhale, and come up. Now for side two. Turn your right toes in, your left thigh completely out. Deeply and completely rotate the left thigh, turn it from the inside out. And have firm pressure down into your right foot. Take a breath in. On exhalation, extend the side of the hand either on the shin or on the support of a block or a chair. Now be firm on the right foot. Press the right foot down and deeply turn the left thigh. Keep the left buttock well tucked into the body as you stretch your trunk out over the left leg. Stretch the arms. And tuck your shoulder blades into your back so the chest comes open. And take a couple soft breaths here. Spread in all directions and a pose with a quiet breath and a quiet mind. Now push down into the right foot, pull from the right wrist, inhale and come up. Turn the feet and bring the feet back together. Be in Tadasana. So use Tadasana to improve your alignment, but also Tadasana can be a place to get the mind calm and composed. Or you can clear the blocks off of your mat. Our next pose is Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2. Bend your arms. Jump or walk your feet four or four and a half feet apart. Turn the left foot slightly in and turn the right leg completely out. Now press strongly down into the left foot and completely turn the right thigh. Rotate it out. Inhale, lift up your chest and on exhalation, bend the right leg to form a square. So this inner right thigh takes a lengthening action from groin to knee. Roll your knee back and keep the buttock well in so you form that 90 degree angle of the thigh. Then lift up through the trunk, through the chest and fully stretch your arms. Inhale to come up and side two. Turn the right leg in, left leg out. Deeply and completely rotate the left thigh. That has to turn. Be firm on the right foot, with the right foot well pressed, bend the left leg to form a square, and elongate from the groin to the knee. As that inner thigh becomes long, keep the knee rolled back and the left buttock firmly pressed into the body. Then lift up through the waist, lift up through the chest, 
and fully stretch the arms. Smooth inhalation, smooth exhalation, and then inhale, come up, turn your feet, bend your arms, and walk or jump the feet together. And take a few quiet breaths here in Tadasana. Keep your thighs back. Lift up your chest and fully stretch the arms. Now, Uttita Parshva Konasana, the side angle pose. You can prepare the blocks at whatever height uh, required and jump. Turn your legs to the side. Right thigh turns deeply and completely out. And the weight, again, is heavy, well pressed down into the left foot. Now form a square, just as you just did in the Virabhadrasana 2. And with your left hand on your waist, reach to the side. Take your time. Keep the right knee back and the right leg well in. And place your hand on the block at any required height. If the block is too low, you could use your forearm here on the thigh instead. Now press the arm and the thigh into each other to help you keep your knee back. And turn the abdomen up away from the inner thigh. Turn the chest up. Open the whole front of the body. Then extend your arm. Stretch from the left foot to the left hand and elongate the whole left side of the body. Smooth inhalation, smooth exhalation. Now press the left foot, pull from the left wrist, and come up. Side two. So you can shift that block out of your way and be ready for side two. The right toes in, the left thigh completely out. Take a breath in and bend your front leg. Form a square. Keep the firm pressure on the outside edge of your right foot and with the right hand on the waist, reach to the left. Keep the left knee well rolled back and the left buttock tucked into the body. And press your arm and your leg into each other. So that helps you keep the knee back, helps you keep the buttock well in. Then this abdominal region has to take a turn. Turn it to the ceiling. Turn your front chest to the ceiling. Now with a very solid pressure on the outside edge of the right foot, reach the right arm over your head. Lengthen from the right foot to the right hand and extend both sides of the body. Smooth inhalation, smooth exhalation. And then press the right foot, pull from the right wrist, inhale to come up. Take your feet together. So we'll now go to Parjvodhanasana, the intense side extension pose. So some of you know how to do that pose with the hands in Surya Namaskar. So if that is known to you, you should do it. Another alternative is hands in the waist, and a third alternative is the hands to the bricks. So start with your hands on the waist or in that reverse prayer position as I just showed and step your feet out this time. Now the step is more three and a half to four feet. Turn the left thigh in a little more deeply, about 45 degrees, and turn the right leg completely out to face the side. The back hip, that's the left hip, has to roll to the front. So turn the left thigh in, bring the left hip forward, and face the side wall. Now with a strong, steady pressure on your left heel, take a breath in, and on exhalation, extend forward. If you can balance with your hands on your waist, do so. If you require the blocks for assistance, utilize them. Now draw the legs up and back. Be on the back leg, but at the same time stretch your chest forward. So this middle upper area of the back tucks in, forming what we call the concave back. Reach your breastbone forward so that that portion of your spine tucks into the body even more. Then on exhalation, bend your elbows and take your trunk down. Those who can balance, definitely do so. Smooth inhalation, smooth exhalation. And now press into the left foot, extend the spine and come all the way up. If you're utilizing the blocks, shift them to the other side. Then turn the right thigh in, right foot in about 45 degrees, turn the left thigh out, and face the side wall. Be firm on the outside edge of your right foot and turn your right hip forward. Take a breath in. 
On exhalation, bend at the hips and place your hands on the bricks or if you can balance, do so. Tuck your upper spine well in. Tuck your back ribs into your body. So the upper spine becomes concave. Reach through the breastbone. Now the legs straight, firm, bend the elbows, take the trunk down. If you can balance, do. And take a couple soft breaths here with the legs straight and the trunk extended. And now look forward. Use the blocks to get your balance or place the hands on the waist and then press the back foot, the right foot. Come on. And step together. Our next pose is Prasarata Padottanasana, the wide legged intense extension pose. So, jump or walk your feet, four and four, four and a half feet apart, and stand with your legs straight. Press your heels down and pull your thighs up. Press your outer heels down, lift your inner thighs up. And continue that lift up through the abdomen, up through the sides of the trunk, up through the sides of the chest. Take a breath in. Now in exhalation, with straight legs, bend from the hips, and place your palms on the blocks, which should be about shoulder width. If that's easy, the legs are straight, the upper back is concave, you can lower those blocks. Take a few breaths here with the breastbone forward and the outer hips back. Keep the legs firm. Now, take the trunk down and support the head. You can adjust the blocks to any arrangement so that the head can be supported. And if that's not possible, that's fine. The hands should press on the floor with the elbows rolled in. And look how I lift the shoulders up. If the hands aren't coming to the floor, you can hold your calves. But in either case, look how the shoulders take a lift. So everyone lift your shoulders up. Let your head be supported. And let the breath be soft and steady. Fully stretch your legs. Don't allow them to go slack. Keep the legs firm. Let the trunk release down. And lightly but definitely, lift the shoulder blades up. Smooth inhalation. Smooth exhalation. Good. Now look forward. Use the blocks and make the spine concave again. Extend the trunk forward. Step your feet slightly in. And with the hands in the waist, stand all the way up. Return to Tadasana. Now, Uttanasana, the intense extension pose, is quite similar to the pose we just did, but now the feet will be about hip width. So have the blocks in front of you, hands on the waist, and with straight legs, lift up the chest and take a nice breath in. Exhale, bend at the hips and place the palms on the blocks. Again, if that can be done well with straight legs and a concave upper spine, you can lower the height of the blocks. Pull your legs up. Keep your thighs firm. Lift the abdominal area and broaden it. And stretch the whole front of the spine forward. Breastbone forward, collarbones forward as the shoulder blades move back. Then with the legs straight, take the trunk down. You can use the blocks if you need them. If you don't, fingertips can come on the floor. Fully stretch the legs. Keep them firm. Lift the inner thighs up. Lift the groins up. Lift the abdomen up. And then let the whole side body release down. The waist, the ribs, the armpits. Keep a light lift of the shoulder blades so you can experience the weight of the head. Smooth inhalation. Smooth exhalation. Now stretch your chest forward. Use the blocks as needed to create that concavity of the upper spine. And then with the hands on the waist, stand all the way up. Dog pose now. Adhamukha Svanasana. So facing to the side, bend forward, place your palms, and walk your feet back to Adhamukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Now fully stretch the arms and legs. Pull the thigh muscles up and then press the front thighs to the back thighs, the back thighs into the space behind you. 
fully stretch the arms and draw the outer upper arms in. So the arms, the elbows become quite firm and straight. So then with that straight arm, straight leg, take the upper spine in. So that shoulder blade region, back rib, rib region, tuck that area well into your body and then stretch back even more. Inhale. And an exhalation, move back. Move back. Move the thighs back so much that you lighten the load on the arms. Inhale. And an exhalation, stretch up and back from the armpits all the way up and back to the sides of the hips. One more soft, easy, elongated breath. And then come on down. All right, our next pose is Bardhajasana, a twist named after the sage. And for this one, you'll need a trifold blanket. So from this blanket shape, I fold in thirds. And depending on your hips, you may need a second or third blanket. Sit on the end of the blanket. And then bend your left leg. Lean on your right hand and place that left leg in your asana. Shift over a little so your right buttock is supported, your left buttock is not. And then take the sole of the right foot and tuck it under the left shin near the left ankle. So the thighs are pointing ahead. Take the outer left hip down so that the pubis and the hips are level. Then inhale, raise up the arms. Exhale and turn to the side, bar Jasana. See that this outer left hip is grounded. It should not fly up. Take the outer left hip down, the left groin down, and then turn to the right. Turn your abdomen left to right. Turn your chest left to right. And see how the bend of the elbows helps you turn. So bend your elbows. Press with the left hand on your thigh. Press on the blankets with your right hand. And turn your front chest to the back of the room, your back chest to the front of the room. Inhale and get tall. And exhale and turn. And then come back to the front. And unfold the right leg. Unfold the left leg and shift over for side two. Then the right leg, lean on your left hand and place that leg in your asana. Shift over so that the left buttock is supported, the right buttock is not. I put the sole of the left foot under the right shin near the ankle. Descend the right hip. So the hips are level, the pubis is level. Then inhale, lift up. Exhale and turn. So press down the left hand to get more lift, and press with the right hand to get more turn. As you turn, observe carefully the right buttock and the right groin. See that the outer right hip is descending, the right groin also soft and descending. And then without disturbing that, bend your elbows and turn. Tuck your shoulder blades well into your back to keep the chest lifted. And as you bend the elbows, turn your front chest to the back of the room, your back chest to the front of the room. Inhale, become tall. Exhale and turn. And release. Unfold the left leg. Unfold the right leg. And relax. All right. We're now reclining for Supta Padakishtasana. That is the reclining big toe pose. Now for this one, you can use a yoga strap, and if you don't have a yoga strap, I'll show you what you can do instead. Lie on your back with both knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. Then, bring your right thigh in over your chest and put the strap around the ball point of your foot. Now, if you don't have a strap, you can interlock your hands behind your thigh, or if you're a little more supple, behind your calf. Now, push up into the strap with your foot. So bring a full straightness to the right leg. If it's difficult to straighten the right leg, let the belt slip through your hands and take the leg a little further away. So with the right leg straight, slide the left heel out along the mat. Elongate the left heel. Elongate the left heel along the mat 
and strive to press the entire back of the left thigh down. Push up into the strap with the right foot while the left heel inches away from the floor. Push with the foot and pull with the hands. So there's this dynamic relationship between the arms and legs. Push with the foot into the strap and pull on that strap with your hands. Push your right thigh away from the trunk. So that action brings more evenness to the abdomen and the hips. Take a breath. And on exhalation, press the right thigh away from the abdomen. Then bend the left leg, bend the right leg, and return both feet to the floor. Side two. Put the strap around the left foot. And push up into the ball point of the foot. Bring that left leg to straightness. Remember, it can be a little further away if needed. Fully straighten the leg. Engage the front thigh muscles, straighten the knee. Then take a breath in, and on exhalation, slide your right heel away. Slide it away further and further, so you can press the back of the right thigh on the floor. The back of the thigh, the back of the heel, press well. Now on the left leg, push the strap with the foot while you pull on the strap with the hand. So that dual action brings a lot of dynamic quality to the arms and the leg. Push the front of the left thigh away from the left abdomen. So you create some space here between the thigh and the abdomen, and the hips become more level. Take a breath, and an exhalation, press the front left thigh away from the trunk. Smooth inhalation, smooth exhalation. Then bend the bottom leg, bend the top leg, and put your feet flat on the floor. So now we're ready for Shavasana. So check your placement on the mat. See that you're even. You can use your hands and lift your head. See that you're equally placed on that mat. And then slide your legs away. Push the buttocks away from the waist. Tuck the shoulder blades well away from the neck. If you wear glasses, you should take those off. And turn your palms up. Now completely let go. Let the arms and legs come to a restful state. Relax the front of the body into the back of the body. And let the back of the body rest completely into the floor. Let your breath be smooth and steady. And with each exhalation, relax more completely. Let go everywhere. Let loose everywhere. And let the smooth, soft exhalations guide you to deeper and deeper relaxation, both physical and mental. Let your face be completely passive. Relax your eyes, relax your tongue, and come to a quiet state. Smooth, soft inhalation. Smooth, soft exhalation, and just a couple more rounds of breath like this. Now take a little bit of a deeper breath. And exhale, a long, deep, soft exhalation. And bend your legs. Take one arm overhead. Roll onto your side. And slowly come on up. And hold your palms. Reverence to the divine within you. Namaste. Thanks so much for joining me in this standing pose practice. So if you want uh, to turn this into a longer practice, you could simply do every pose twice. You did them once, you could do them twice, get a little more duration in your practice. And again, you can find a print uh, version, a file that you could print uh, at greentario.com. Thanks everybody, namaste.